I have to um, be accountable to the Australian Association of Social Work. Psychologists would have to be accountable to APRA. If you're going on to play therapy, there's a regulatory body there. There's two different regulatory bodies depending on the qualifications. Councils have a different, yeah, like people that have gone through a Masters of Counseling have a different regulatory body. Hi, I'm Kim Tolson and I'm the Traveling Therapist. It's my passion to teach therapists how to navigate online private practices and multiple income streams so they can travel the world. I'm a digital nomad with a virtual insurance-based private therapy practice and a multi-six-figure coaching business. I'm obsessed with entrepreneurship and developing tools that can help therapists live an adventurous lifestyle. In this podcast, I will discuss my journey as a digital nomad, I'll chat with other traveling therapists, and help you navigate the complexities of running an online insurance-based practice. I'm so glad to have you with me on this journey. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of the Traveling Therapist Podcast. I'm super excited today because we have somebody with us, a therapist all the way from Australia, This is so cool to me. I just love when people from other countries come in and want to tell their story and how things work in the, in different countries, because this podcast does tend to be a little bit like U.S. centric. So anyway, I want to introduce you guys to Rashida Fido. Did I say it right? (laughs) Rashida Fido. I swear I practice these things before I hit record you guys and I always mess up. Rashida (laughs) Fido from Australia. So Rashida, I'd love to just turn it over to you and have you tell everybody, like, how did you go from just being a typical therapist to a traveling therapist? Maybe just tell us about your story and all that great stuff. Yeah, sure. So I've been a social worker for about 10 years now. And yeah, I began, had, yeah, I've had about four jobs in social work before I got into private practice, which I've been doing for about six months. So I worked in maternity at a hospital, a regional hospital in Victoria for about four years. And then I worked in youth diversion program. And then I worked in infant and child mental health from zero to 18 in regional Victoria for a couple of years. And I had to travel in that job. So I was Mm. traveling out from my home to where I was located. It's about an hour and 15. And then I traveled from there to another kind of, um, regional town from that location and that was about 45 minutes away so it was traveling that Mm. and I really loved working with kids and I thought yeah I'm going to stay in this area of mental health with kids and adolescents and then I came back to work to a job where close to where I live Mm -hmm. but it was also traveling that in terms of going to different schools in that capacity as well that was working with adolescents and mental health and then, wow. yes, yeah, so that involved traveling to, you know, four different schools throughout the week. And I did that for a couple of years. And now I'm in private practice. So it's somewhat similar in terms of working with a similar cohort. So I work with children nine to up to the age of 21 in mental health. But I work in four different locations. And, yeah, that involves travel as well. <laughs> So about, yeah, the farthest would be maybe an hour and 15 from where I live. Yeah, and that regional town, yeah, is really interesting in terms of, you have service provision, so that doesn't have a lot of service provision as well. And, yeah, I really like going out there. Um, yeah, and I think that's that's a, where the premise is at the moment in terms of my work is travelling out to four different locations, and providing kind of play directed therapy and talk therapy as well to children at least. Nice. So when you travel to these places, do you have to go and stay for a while or is it like the same day you go, you go and then you drive back home and just kind of have a really long commute every time? Yeah, I, I go, I travel um, and I do a block of people and then I come back. Gotcha. Okay. Wow. Yeah, that's it very interesting. That yeah, winter that might change though. I might say, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Oh yeah. So what would you do then? Would it be just virtual, like remote play with the kids? It's, it's all kiddos, right? That you work with, is it? Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I work with 
yeah, children and young people. So I, I would still travel out in winter, but I might just stay over only because um, some of the places that I travel to in winter, it can flood. And so yeah, keeping in mind of that. So it would just yes. be like that dependent, but that's the other part of the job. And I'm, I'm sure they'll be transferable to lots of um, traveling therapists around keeping an eye on the weather because some of the places last year that I went to, there was flooding. The oh track gosh. Out. And in Australia, sometimes bushfires. So just oh we've got gosh. a up around what's happening in the weather. Oh, wow. That. Yeah. That makes it yeah. convenient. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely, definitely. <laughs> so having to travel for work and do you ever also travel like just like like with your family or whatever, like vacationing out and traveling is still trying to work remotely or do you just pretty much do vacations and then come back and just literally just do your work from Victoria and then travel out to these these satellite sites to see your clients and stuff? I would vacation somewhere else, I think. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not, I'm not, you know, I get enough in Victoria. I probably go to another state. Um, I gotcha. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. So interesting. So can you tell us about just, I'm super curious just about other countries and cultures and how licensing works and, you know, like, what are your regulations around, you know, say if you wanted to travel to a, a totally different location, could you still see your clients remotely in Australia if you wanted to do that? If that makes sense? Yeah. Like if you wanted yeah. to go to New Zealand on vacation, but still wanted to work and see your clients, could you do that in Australia? Like, how does that, how does that work? <laughs> yeah. Look, if I say I traveled in Australia to Northern Territory, which is a different state, to virtual I could definitely do virtual contact. Okay. There's no issues with that. I'm a mental health social worker, so there's accreditation around that. I don't know what the similar version of that is in the USA. Yeah, in the US, we're, we have, like, we're licensed in just one state usually, or we can try for other states, but, but each state has kind of control over us and can tell us, ah. you know if we have to be sitting in our state while we see our clients, like some states, they want you to physically be in the state. Most of them don't care where the clinician is, but the client has to be physically located in the state, like where we're licensed. So oh. it gets a little complicated. <laughs> yeah. Okay. No, we can, I can see people from interstate. So. Oh, um, okay. Yeah. If I, yeah, if people choose to see me. Tasmania, I could link in with them virtually as long, yes. yeah, and I'm working on premise of a mental health social worker, so I can take referrals from doctors and they get 10 sessions a year. I also um, take referrals for people that have NDIS, which mm. is the National Disability Insurance Scheme. But, oh, yeah. interesting. Mm -hmm. But I can see people virtually from anywhere in Australia. There is no restrictions on that. And in terms of traveling in Victoria, yeah, as long as I've got an ABN with my business, I've got insurance, um, and then I've got the mental health social accreditation. And with that, I can pretty much do whatever I want. <laughs> um, wow, Victoria, that's pretty cool. Uh, yeah, yeah. And I set up in different locations, yeah. like the geographic areas. But yeah, apart from having like an ABN private insurance, just in terms of you know, covering what could happen in that space that's and just tracking my mileage. That's really it. Yeah. That's amazing. When you say ABN, what does that stand for? Uh, Australian business number. So that oh, of, oh, yeah. gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah. In the United States, it's the MPI. We have a national provider number. Yeah. It sounds uh, similar. Yeah. Gotcha. So how does insurance work there? I'm just so curious because in the United States, you know, if, if a client has an insurance plan, they really are kind of restrictive sometimes around, you know, how many times you can see the client, uh, you have to be making sure that you're billing for, you know, really specific problems and you're treating like through the medical model in the United yeah. States. Mm -hmm. So how is it, how is it in Australia and Victoria with the insurance? Like, how does that work for, for clients? I'm just so yeah. curious. I think, I think what we would have similar to yourself is called what through, they can go to a doctor and they can get 
10 sessions um, via a mental health care plan. So the restriction would be you're just getting 10 sessions per calendar year. It's not, oh. for, you're not restricted to any particular mental health issue. Mm. Uh, and you have, you know, there's, I suppose it's tied to focused psychological strategies that you can use. So, you know, CBT, action and commitment therapy, EMDR, motivational interviewing. But then also you can kind of frame it. Or I was also use like play therapy activities. I use stand play and I kind of word it when we're sending a letter back after six sessions to the doctor. You know, we utilise these particular modalities to help with emotional expression, emotional literacy, that kind of stuff. Yeah. Mm. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, that sounds kind of similar. So if they use their 10 sessions, what do you guys do then? Is it, does it, do they then become like private pay or how do you handle that in Australia? That's the tricky bit. And yeah. I'm, I'm assuming that's what happens with yourselves. That can be really difficult. Because mm-hmm. sometimes a lot of people's presentations need more than 10 sessions. Yeah. And I say to the, you know, the parent, we've got, we've got 10 sessions, particularly if we're starting in the start of the year, we've got uh-huh. a case exhibit around, I might see the young person every three weeks to kind of, you know, be able to use the 10 sessions for the whole year. If we're starting in July, it's a different story because you know, oh. we've, got, we've got 10 sessions that's in within six months. Oh, okay, gotcha. Oh, yeah. yeah. But, I, yeah, I talk to parents, like, we've got 10 sessions. Some people want to pay private as well. Like, they're happy with that. They have the resources. Some people don't. And it's just being, yeah, transparent kind of at the start as well. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So interesting. Yeah. So is there time restrictions on the sessions that you have, like the 10 sessions? Is it like an hour or? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Wow. wow. That's so interesting. I don't know if I it's similar always... to yourselves, like in terms. Yeah. Usually, mostly we call it like a 53 minute session insurance will pay for, you know, but if they're private pay, you can make it as long as you want. It, you know, oh, you right. can charge as you could charge as much as you want if the client's willing to pay that. But but for insurance, okay. they pretty much restrict it to an hour. Yeah. Unfortunately. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So restrictive. Gosh. So 10 mm-hmm. sessions. Okay. So you really have to do some, get in there and do some really like serious work. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I think yeah. like the usual, like the first session is usually intake, but then sometimes you're doing intervention as well because mm-hmm. It's, yeah, it's 10 sessions. Last year with COVID, we had 20 sessions to work with. Oh, wow, yeah. But, yeah, they've, they've taken the 10 sessions back. So <laughs> now we've gone back to 10. So. Oh, mm. gosh, isn't that terrible? Mm. Yeah, yeah, really tricky. Do they, are they fine with you guys doing, like, video sessions or does it, do they really want it in person? Oh, they are. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah, wow. Yeah. Gosh, so interesting. So I'm just trying to think of more questions to ask you about that. <laughs> just, I just, I just love hearing how other countries work. So, so in Australia, it's, is it the entire country has that same insurance or is that like a Victoria thing and it's different in different states in Australia or is it like a national type of mental health care plans? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah it, it's um, Australia wide. Oh, okay. Interesting. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Huh, that's so cool. Does it pay pretty well? <laughs> I'm just curious. Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> you don't want to say you don't have to. I'm just curious. No, 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 no. Our reimbursement I, rates really vary over here. <laughs> yeah. Look, it, it's okay. Like, and I add an, a gap fee on top of it. So there's, you get a certain amount that's called a rebate, a Medicare rebate that you get back. Oh, okay. Yeah, and then then I add a small gap on top of that to, you know, that just pays for, like, materials because I go through play materials, like, there's no tomorrow, trading, yeah. location costs as well, like, rent costs, you know, hiring oh. rooms. Yeah. Interesting. Um, okay. 
Cool. So when you go to these four locations, are you essentially renting an office in each place or do you have, you know, just people you share office, share office space with, or I'm just curious, like how that works when you go to these satellite locations that you go to? Yeah, it's it's different setup for each place. Oh, is it? Yeah, okay. Yeah, but you had to get creative. Yeah, you definitely like the two of them. I ship like I rent, like I pay a small fee to rent the room, but I also okay. share the space. So you, the place that's further out is probably the most accessible in terms of she does sand play as well. So I mm -hmm. use her stuff. I don't have to cart around the sand tray with my miniatures. She's already got it set up and then I pay yeah. a small fee to rent her room. So that's probably the easiest setup. <laughs> Out nice. of the three, the other three, yeah. yeah, I'm cutting all my stuff. Yeah, I'm sand play, you know, sand tray, miniatures. Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah. And do you take it all with you to each place? <laughs> do you carry yeah. like all your... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I look in boxes and my partner's kind of just see them come out with super, you know, parts and yeah. puppets and stuff like that into my car. So, yeah. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah. How interesting. Absolutely. So how is, and I'm really asking this for any traveling therapist that's traveling to Victoria or Australia in general, like how is the internet out there? Do you guys have pretty good connectivity in most places? Like if you wanted to do telehealth sessions, how does that how does, how does the internet, how is it out there? <laughs> yeah, it's a good question. Look, it would depend where you're going in Australia. That's probably the best answer. Like some of these places, if I was to choose to do telehealth, which is the place where I go an hour and 15, yeah, some of the residents live further out. If I was to do telehealth, it would not work. Oh, their, gotcha. The internet is that bad. Like it's beautiful mm. places in the country. But yeah. the internet is not great. So, yeah, it would depend where you go. Like if it's country, Australia, if it's outback Australia, just keeping in mind, yeah, sometimes the internet is not great. Yeah. If, say, you know, Melbourne, Sydney, you know, inner suburbia would be fine. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, country, that's probably something you'd probably want to investigate because some of it, yeah, one of the locations I went to, Sometimes people say, you know, we've got this set up for you. <laughs> but when you actually go there, the Wi-Fi isn't great. Oh, oh my yeah. gosh. Yeah, <laughs> that's the worst. <laughs> yeah, it is. So I think I'm, that's one of the lessons I've learned is kind mm. of, yeah, getting to know, I suppose, your demographic, how busy it is in these particular locations and also like the service provision as well. Mm. Hey everyone, I wanted to break in here real quick and let you know about a company called Alma. As you may know, I have a variety of resources available to therapists who want to bill insurance in their private practice. I have a comprehensive membership to teach you how to bill on your own, but I also refer mental health practitioners to companies like Alma who can do your billing for you if you don't want to hire billers or do it on your own. If this sounds like the kind of support you need in your insurance-based private practice, Consider joining Alma. Get the tools and support you need to manage and grow your private practice, accept insurances, and focus on what matters most, delivering high quality care to your clients. I've shared my personal referral link in the show notes of this episode if you want to schedule an appointment and check them out. Yeah, yeah. Do you have workarounds for that that you figured out or is it just like, okay, the internet's not going to work today. We're going to have to reschedule or have you figured out a way to like, work shot. yeah. Cause like, I'm thinking like, you know, in some countries, like, you know, you could, you can have a hotspot on your cell phone or you might have mm -hmm. a mobile like hotspot that you take with you or something like that. Is, do, you, do you have anything like that that you figured out in these rural areas or just nothing works? It's just like, if it's not going to work, it's not going to work. <laughs> I think because I work with it, because I work with kids as well, probably. And this is, I know this is just my preference. I know a lot of people love Sally House, so I, yeah. I do not want to upset anyone here. But I prefer face to face, and particularly yeah. in the place where I travel, an hour and fifteen, 
and then there's people that live further out. Mm-hmm. Probably, telehealth is probably not going to work, to be honest. Yep. For that location, it's face to face, and even if I have to stay overnight, if, you know, the weather's tricky. It, it is what it is. For other locations, yeah, definitely I can try and hotspot um, and try and work something else out. Mm-hmm. But, but I think for certain areas and for kids as well, a face-to-face would be my preference. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. And sometimes, like, I have to reschedule, like, this week. Because I'm in my car all the time, okay, the stuff that's happening with my tyres, so I mm-hmm. can't go out at the moment this Sunday as I anticipated because it's not safe to drive on my tires and I just explain that to my clients like I unfortunately I can't come out and see you I'll see you next week and they were fine yeah Yeah. that's good flexible yeah yeah gotcha okay yeah it's so interesting because in the United States before COVID a lot of our licensing boards said like we couldn't do phone calls with our clients it wasn't allowed, but if it wasn't a visual face-to-face, it wasn't considered therapy. Um, but after COVID, that changed because we had to get really, you know, we had to really figure out alternative ways, especially for like the older population that couldn't work the internet or whatever. So we were allowed to do phone calls after that, but we don't know what's going to happen once these COVID, extended COVID rules or whatever get lifted. So I was just curious how other countries handle that. If you could do a phone call or you know, if, if the face-to-face technology wasn't working, that sort mm. of thing. You can yeah. definitely, you can definitely do it. Um, okay. Just, yeah. Like if don't like to. No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think the, yeah. the preference would be face-to-face. And I have some kids that have ASD. Yeah. And even just generally kids yeah. and adolescents prefer face. And I actually prefer face-to-face, I think, rather than telehealth. Yeah. But it's definitely doable. Like if you're working mm. With an adult population, for example, that's in a city, I mean, you could definitely do loads of telehealth. Right. I think it's just depending on, you know, the localities you're going to, what, you know, internet reception you have, and the cohort, if, you know, if, if it's um, mm-hmm. appropriate for them or not. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. There's definitely clients I would never want to just do a phone call with because I need to see, are you okay? <laughs> Yes. 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 I know. I totally get that. (laughs) Yeah. So what else do I want to ask you about this? So what is licensing like there? Like in the United States, we have, you know, we have psychologists, we have licensed clinical social workers, we have licensed counselors, we have licensed marriage and family counselors. Like we have a lot of different credentials. Mm -hmm. So I'm just curious, like in Australia, do you have a lot of different specialties kind of with with like the therapy world or is there just a couple like how does it work over there yeah I think so I think we might not have as many Mm -hmm. in contrast to um you say so there's psychologists similar to yourselves like clinical psychologists general psychologists there's play therapists and there's I mean okay I think they're trying to get kind of more publicity around credentialing around that. So there's different courses you can do and different kind of oh. um, credentialing around that. And then there's counsellors and there's, yeah, credentialing around that. And then, yeah, mental health social workers. So okay. I think, yeah, that would, that would be probably, okay. apologies if I missed anyone, but... Yeah. yeah, that would be kind of three, four or five. No, I was just going to say, and then are they all sort of like master's level? Like, because like here, you know, we have bachelor's level sort of like four years of school, and then we can go on two more years and get our master's degree and then go on to get a PhD if you want to, like a doctorate level. How does it work over there? Is it like how many years, like to be in private practice, do you have to like have a master's on top of a bachelor's kind of stuff or no? So I've just got a How's bachelor it? of social work, but then you do. Oh, okay. But then to get credentialed as a mental health social worker, you have to have had two years in the mental health gotcha. social sector. And then you have to do an exam. You have to prove that you've done so many hours of professional development. Oh, okay. You have to have signature of the supervisor saying you've done so many hours in the mental health field. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, That's pretty much how it is here. Yeah. yeah. And then what were you going to say? Then you get? Oh, then you get accreditation. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. But it's fine. It's fine to practice like even bachelor's level. It sounds like it's fine to have your own practice and just go see clients however you want to. Yeah. That's pretty cool. And, and then counselors, I'm sh- like, I know there's people that do, I think it's the masters of counseling, but I don't know how, I, I don't know what, how many years that's attached to, but yeah, they w- would be seeing people potentially from the national disability insurance scheme. Yeah. So well, you don't have to have masters. To, to oh, okay. See. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's so yeah. interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Very cool. So is for, for a therapist in general, is there like a, like a main regulatory body or is it just different regulatory bodies for every, okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. different regular, look, can I say it today? Regulatory <laughs> bodies <laughs> for each field. So I have the, I have to um, be accountable to the Australian Association of Social Work. Psychologists would have to be accountable to ACRA. If you're going under play therapy, there's a regulatory body there. I think there's two different regulatory bodies depending on your qualifications. Councils have a different, yeah, like people that have gone through a master's of counselling have a different regulatory body. So, yeah, it's all different depending on, yeah, what you're calling. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah, it's interesting because one of the reasons I'm asking is because, you know, we get these questions all the time. Like, can I go, oh, can I go, you know, live in Australia for six months if I want to and, and work there, you know, and a lot of us don't know the answers to that stuff, but it usually starts with contact the regulatory body that is similar to your licensure and ask them if they have any restrictions, you know, to being able to, to sit in their country in Australia or, you know, wherever you are visiting, if, like Victoria, can I sit in Victoria and see my clients back in the United States? Is that okay with, ah, with yes. your regulatory body? Yeah. So that's why I was wondering, there's like different ones because, you know, like if I'm a social worker here, I would need to contact whoever regulates social work in Victoria and then ask them, is it okay with them if I come? And usually the answer is we don't care as long as you're not seeing like citizens of Victoria. Oh, okay. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, you know, it's, it's really interesting. And probably after this, I'm going to go research and see if I can find an answer because I love to be able to tell people, you know, like, yeah, you can go work there for six months or, you know, you could, you could be there for three months without getting a visa or, you know, there's all these regu- regulatory type things that you have to take into account. If you want to actually be a traveling therapist and still see your clients like uh-huh. back in the United States or, you know, if somebody from England wanted to come to Australia, you know, you have to, you have to check the regulations of both places to see if you can do it. Mm. So, yeah, it's complicated. Yeah, it would be. <laughs> I, I could only imagine what it would be. Yeah. yeah. But most countries are fine with it. You know, they're like, yeah, it's okay. Just don't like see our citizens. And if you do, you're probably going to pay us taxes and, Ah. you know, be established as a resident here. So it gets, you know, it gets more complicated if you want to actually like move somewhere and try to see people in, like if I wanted to come and see clients in Victoria, that would be interesting, you know, to see how that would work if I could even do it. So, Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know Weird, what the logistics huh? would be. Yeah. 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 Curious. I'll probably reach out. <laughs> I'd love to <laughs> research. I'll probably reach out and see if I can find maybe add a little addendum to this episode and say, this is what I found out. <laughs> oh, no, that sounds great. That sounds great. Yes. So what else? Is there anything I didn't ask you about? Just what you're doing and your life that you think like would be helpful for people to know about if they wanted to, especially people living in Victoria, they want to do something similar to what you're doing. Do you have anything um, else you want to share about that? I think, look, it's pretty easy to set up to be quite honest. And a lot of it It was networking. Yeah, like friends that lived in that area and then they can refer me to either, you know, someone that has room and then just making networks in the area to get referrals, like doctors, schools. And then I think just knowing, yeah, just being aware of the weather, that was, is one safety issue. So particularly in, yeah, winter is kind of June, July, August in Australia. Mm, okay. 
Yeah, so, and sometimes we have black ice, which is really hard to drive on. So I think I'm preparing for that in terms of probably going later and leaving earlier. There's also, and then summer, you know, and sometimes in terms of bushfires that happen in this region, so just having an app. I think it's a Vic emergency app, which is estate focused. Oh. But I'm sure there's other ones in different parts of Australia. That just notifies mm. me if there's a fire in a particular region I'm driving to or there's flooding. So just being aware of that. I think also some of the areas I drive to, yeah, there'll be kangaroos that you've got to be aware of when you're driving, <laughs> like in, particularly when there's daylight saving. We're getting oh, I've heard it. that. That it's not yeah. safe to drive at night sometimes because of kangaroos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they'll be um, crossing the roads, yeah. And when daylight saving stops, which is going to happen soon, it gets a bit trickier around animals on the roads. So, yeah, I've hit an eagle, unfortunately. <laughs> like, oh, no. we're going into different terrain here. So where I live, it's quite, it's regional, um, but it's still quite urban. And where I travel mm -hmm. out to, it's a lot of forest and bush. So it's different yeah. terrain in terms of wildlife and stuff. So just being aware of that. I'm sure that comes yeah. up in different areas of Australia as well. Yeah. And then just uh, some of the places I go to, I'll be a solo practitioner, so I'll be going on weekends and just canvassing safety with referrals. Like if you feel that there's red flags that, you know, if you, that you don't feel comfortable being with, say, a parent alone in that particular space, then mm -hmm. going out on a weekday um, rather than a weekend when there's people around. It's just basic safety. Kind of yeah, thing. yeah. So, yeah. yeah yeah it's interesting it's things you don't think about like in the united states it tends to be like deer <laughs> like ah. deer will jump but yeah you got to watch out for deer at night but you know we right. don't, don't think about kangaroos yeah it's so interesting <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah 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 definitely i, yeah. I never thought i'd hit an eagle that just took me yeah weeks, but yeah yeah because you always think birds are like get your they'll fly away or they won't you know they'll swoop in and out they won't you won't actually hit them so yeah <laughs> yeah it's a little bit of a shock I bet yeah, yeah. yeah. but it's it's fun and, and you get to see beautiful parts of Victoria that's the other thing mm -hmm. like places where you only come across a car every 20 minutes and you know some of the you know places that I drive through is, is yeah. beautiful that's yeah. one of the yeah of it so that's awesome mm -hmm. yeah definitely and the that's people, so cool. people get to meet that you wouldn't necessarily you know get to meet if you didn't kind of do outreach as well yeah. it's neat though because i mean you 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 go and come back but i'm imagining like particularly people that want to help in rural areas they could schedule it so they're out for two weeks somewhere seeing and then maybe somewhere else Two weeks if they have less areas they like to travel to and and still be able to work and all of that that's really cool yeah yeah definitely and I'd love to do something like that where you at some point with you know some of the areas um in Victoria like two or three hours away don't have much service provision from where mm -hmm. I'm living so two or three hours away it'd be great to just do even like a a pop-up kind of you know situation or something like that where you just travel out and do some you know intensive kind of work and you can yeah. stay in caravans in Australia and you get to see a bit of oh. yeah you know like that's very cheap the caravan kind of situation what's a caravan is that like like we have um, RV parks here is that yeah similar to that I was thinking oh, what okay is okay <laughs> transferable <laughs> object but yeah it's like similar to that you know, and cool. you can stay overnight and you could get to see different parts of Victoria as well through that. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. So really that's cool. Plan, I think, is at some point, not in winter, but you know, maybe next summer, doing some mm -hmm. group work potentially in, you know, further regions. That's yeah. amazing. Yeah. Well, let us know how that goes. I love I love follow ups to see how's it going <laughs> down. What you implemented yeah. at this new part? Yeah, that's really cool. Mm -hmm. 
And I love just uh, being able to talk to somebody that's in a different country, just to hear the the different the differences and the perspectives, and just you know how how they're similar and different, and and to help people that I mean maybe somebody listening wants to move to Victoria and live there, like who knows? But to hear you know your story and how it goes, it's really interesting. Thank you for sharing with us. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Lovely to catch up with you. Yeah, so awesome. Well, where can people reach you if they want to ask you questions or even play therapists, I'm sure, are like hard to come by, I'm guessing, in Victoria, even these rural areas. So where could somebody reach out if they wanted to? Uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm a trainee play therapist at the moment, just in case one of my lecturers is listening to this. And so obviously, yeah. yeah. Uh, but, but I'm at... <laughs> My business is called Lionhearted Counseling, and if they just put in Lionhearted Counseling in the web browser, yeah, they, I've got a yeah, web page, but they can always contact me through the Facebook page as well. Um, that's nice. accessible through that. Yeah. Nice. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thanks for taking the time to talk with us and just tell us about Australia, Victoria in general. Oh, my pleasure. Lovely to catch up with you. You too. You too. Thank you so much for listening to the Traveling Therapist Podcast. For show notes, links, and downloads, head over to thetravelingtherapist.com, where you'll be able to learn more about my journey, the courses I've created for you, and other exciting resources to make your dreams become a reality. If you've enjoyed this episode, please share with your traveling therapist friends, subscribe to the podcast, and if you love this episode, please leave a review.